Hey Internet, my name is Gregory. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to connect uh, your Raspberry Pi to the Dreamcast and provide the server functions. So, um, I'm running on a Raspberry Pi 2 right now. Uh, as you can see, this is a stock system. I just installed Raspbian. There's nothing on the system otherwise. Um, and I'm going to be taking you through this installation guide. So, uh, you're going to find a link in the description to um, my GitHub, which is going to be right here. Um, the three things you're going to, want to look at are the Dreamcast host, Dreamcast rebuilt websites, and the Dreamcast website. Uh, the rebuilt websites are kind of like a work in progress right now, but the, the key here is the, the Dreamcast host, which is the Linux DC to PC host program. Uh, and then you have the Dreamcast website, which is going to provide a lot of the functions for uploading save files and uh, information and documentation on games. So you're probably going to want to grab both these. Uh, to get them, you just click the, the name for the, the, the project, and you go right here to download zip. I've already downloaded these, but that's basically you're just going to download the zip files. And, um, yeah, for all of them. Then, uh, in your downloads folder, uh, you will find the three zips. Uh, you can open them with the archiver, and uh, just move those to your desktop. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to grab them all. So, <clears throat> really what you want, uh, I would like the Jet Grind Radio for this one, but as you can see, there's some other ones that come with it. Um, did you just, nice, okay. And, um, move to Wastebasket, yes, keeping this clean so it's easier to work with. Uh, I want the main, so you just want the main file from the Dreamcast host, and then, um, Yes. Go on. Okay. And then uh, make sure that you get the, the website. And I'll show you how to get those packs in a second. Oh, it's going to do it again, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. So there we go. And then oops, close that. Move to wastebasket. And then we should be done with these uh, three zips. You shouldn't need them again. I'm going to hold on to them just in case. I mean, you can hold on to them if you want to fix the website or something like that. But basically, in this main folder, and you can rename this folder whatever you want. Um, you're going to find this folder called Add Site. Don't remove, rename this folder or this folder once you're in here. Leave this stuff as it is. Um, the run.sh is really everything. It kind of launches these other scripts, right? So these, you, there's five scripts in there. And then there's an override file. And the override file has a lot of documentation on how you can alter certain settings. But it'll also specify uh, what the defaults are. And you can change those as you want. Things like... Uh, specifying a specific IP address that you want the Dreamcast to be or um, certain certain websites that you would like to to use or not um, and then you can specify domains for the website side of it and I've put some pre-listed ones in there that I'm using um, you might want to change them or not it really shouldn't matter none of that stuff should be websites that you would normally be going to so I would leave them as is um, and then just take a look through there the other thing that's really good is um, you can group um, certain servers. I, I left some examples in there. Um, and I think there's quite a bit of documentation on how to, how to change stuff around. Um, so, you know, definitely take a look at the override file and I think that you'd find some valuable information there. And feel free to look through any of the scripts as, as well. There's a lot of documentation and over commenting so that it'd be easier for you guys. But basically go into the add site folder uh, move, delete the example that's in there. Um, it's good for, for reading up on, but otherwise you don't really need it. And move your two websites in there. DreamSite being the big one that we really want to get hold of. Uh, DreamSite is going to override uh, Sega.com, and the JetGrind Radio site is um, already specified in here, so that should be taken care of for you. Um, so now it's time to dive into the terminal. Terminal is an interesting thing. If you've never used it, I'll talk you through how to simply get get around. Um, you're going to start off in your home directory, um, which is uh, same as right here when you open up a, when you open a web browser, I mean a, a folder browser, uh, you're in the same place. If you want to see the folders that are listed, you can launch a program called ls, and that'll blast out everything that's in there. And as you can see, the names here will line up with the names that are over here. Um, you want to work your way to the desktop. Uh, which is where I've put the main folder. So um, CD is to change the directory. So you CD to the desktop. 
and then um, you can ls again you'll see that main is the only folder that's there so we cd to main and we see all the files that are there uh, run.sh is the only one we really want to launch uh, but it needs to be executable so to add executable permissions to it uh, we want to say run it as an administrator so we say sudo and then we need to change the modifications of the file so we chmod and then we do uh, 755 which will make it executable and um, we say run.sh so that's the file we want to change the permissions to and then boom uh, you can see that if you ls again it's turned green uh, which means that it is ready to be executed so what you do is you say sudo dot slash run dot sh that's all you need to do and every time you want to run this server that's the only command you need sudo dot run sudo dot slash run dot sh um, every time that's you come into it that's what it's going to do the first time we run this it's going to run a lot longer than it will any other time because what it needs to do is download all the dependent software for you but after that it'll check see that it's already there and never again need to do that so this first run will be longer than the others um, and we'll just we'll dive right in so that's running uh, and it seems to be going as it should uh, it found all the software it needs to get it's downloading them uh, I'm gonna skip here to um, I don't have the modem connected so it should crash uh, when it gets to that point or just you know stop when it gets to that point and so I'll start this back up when we get to the point where everything's been installed okay so I just uh, installed the whole program um, and then I cleared out my terminal so um, now that you have everything installed if you had uh, the modem already connected um, it should actually just run into the program and you should be good to go um, but just want to say uh, this is the command that you need to run, sudo dot slash run dot sh, every time you want to run this software, and that's it. Uh, if you want to make modifications, um, those modifications will be detected right here. If you run into an error, uh, rerun the script, and it will figure out any if there's any settings that went corrupt. Uh, it will refill them all out every time you run the software. Um, if you have any issues, it, will de it generally detects it here. If your modem uh, disconnects, and it says it can't find it. Um, sometimes you need to unplug it and replug it back in, and then just run the script again. Um, generally, that that has fixed every issue I've run into. So what it looks like when you run it from scratch, or like say you're jumping into this and everything's been installed, it should look like this. Um, checks for the software, checks the modem, detects for an IP, um, and then um, you know it's all right there. It tells you what's going on. And as soon as you see this section right here where it says starting listener, uh, that is it talking through the modem and telling you what it is what it's doing with the modem. And you see start listening procedure right here. Uh, it says ready listening for dialing keys. What that means is it is, lis it is listening on the line for the Dreamcast to, to start typing in numbers and dialing for its server. That's when it starts answering and it'll do it automatically for you. Um, so if you get to this point, you're good to go. Uh, just make sure that how I described it in the video previously, the introduction video, um, how I showed you how the hardware is set up, make sure you follow that kind of thing again. Uh, you want to have uh, a line voltage that's being provided. I'm using a magic jack to provide that line voltage. Um, you want to have a splitter so that you can plug in everything to, to connect it. Um, you, you need the Dreamcast connected on the line and you need uh, your modem connected on the line. Those are the three things that are most important. Uh, the magic jack will need to to have its dial tone turned off so you need to have it connected to a computer and being listening on that microphone just to turn off the dial tone or alternatively if you hook in a phone to the line before you run this server because it's listening for dialing keys uh, if you just press a button on the phone it'll it'll cause the magic jack to turn off that dial tone um, but otherwise you're good to go uh, and you can run it from now um, so i can show you some of the stuff now that you can do on the Dreamcast with it uh, connecting in. Okay, so on the Dreamcast, you're gonna wanna set up some settings so that it can dial into the Raspberry Pi server. Uh, in order to do that, you need to just go to the options, head over to internet connection, and I'll take you through some of the settings that you need to set up. Uh, the default for user login uh, with the server is Dream, and the default password is Dreamcast. 
Um, you are able to alter this any way you want in the override file. You can pick a different username and password if you so choose, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, your real name doesn't matter. Um, for the dial-up number, you need to have something there. Uh, it doesn't need to be a full number. I'm using 555. Sometimes the, the modem doesn't pick up the first dial, uh, the first key press. Uh, so I have multiple keys there just to try to um, make sure that it goes through. You can have a few more numbers than that. Uh, you don't want to have a super long phone number because the modem starts answering the first time the first key is pressed. Uh, your DNS 1 and 2, those can all be 0. It's taken care of by the server side of things. If you look over to dial options, um, I believe that what I have here is the defaults, but you know you might want to make sure that your settings have, have not changed previously. Um, so all those dialing settings at the top, those can be just empty. Uh, your modem initialization, this is the function that you send through to the Dreamcast's modem. And so the Dreamcast's modem, um, I just set it up to reset to default values. So AT gets its attention and then FO uh, to reset the, the whole setting. Um, dial, you want it to be tone. I don't think that the USB modems can pick up a pulse dial. Uh, so I think that's why it needs to be tone. Um, dial area code off and then a blind dial on you want this on because what it means is that the modem does not check to make sure that a dial tone is present before it starts dialing so to blind dial just automatically as soon as it picks up the connection it just starts dialing out in terms of proxy settings uh, these can just be off uh, don't use a proxy and then the other things are just empty because you're not using the proxy and that's it for setting up on the Dreamcast side of things uh, and then you can just try to hit connect and you should be able to go right in if all the hardware is set up Okay, so when you're ready to connect from the main menu, you just go up to connect uh, So this is on web browser 2.6 as you can see in the bottom left uh, Some of the web browsers are a little different But basically whether it's a, a phone little icon that you click to connect or, or whatever you hit connect uh, It'll start dialing into the modem uh, The whole process for connecting to the web to make sure that it works or not is about 30 seconds So don't get too impatient um, and you know the whole dial process it'll it'll automatically load uh, a web page for you uh, this one's default is it's trying to load a, a Dreamcast website from Sega uh, a lot of the web browsers I've dealt with generally go to Sega or some Sega related site um, a couple go to dreamcast.com so if you have a web browser that needs that you can you can alter it to go where you want it to go uh, but uh, the reason I'm download I'm, I'm setting up the website to install on Sega is at least the web browser I'm using goes to Sega, uh, and then that'll load up the site for you. Uh, and the first thing that you see when you get to the site is a VMU file uploader. And you can you can browse your VMUs and then change a name on them. So here, I'm giving a quick example where I'm uploading a, a PSO screenshot, um, and then I name it. The names need to be between four and eight characters in length. Uh, if you mess that up and don't pick it, it's going to tell you that you need to do that. Uh, I'm just sorry because you're going to have to like upload it before you get the alert that says you did it wrong. Um, and then from there, uh, one of the things that I want to show is the reason I'm picking this PSO one is it's it's the longest it's going to take to upload a file like ever because it takes up the whole memory card. Um, and then... Um, in this example, I messed up the blocks because the blocks don't display that way. Uh, I fixed that error. But uh, basically, it can extract screenshots from Fantasy Star Online, and you can say if you wanted to browse this on, a, on, on the Raspberry Pi itself, you could just right-click and save that image somewhere. Uh, so it's a lot easier to extract those images yourself. Another example of something I want to show is, so when you have a lot of files on here, you can, you can browse multiple pages of files. I think the default is uh, showing 20 save files per per setting, uh, per page. And then uh, one of the things that I think is a little exciting is that we can, if we start reversing some of the save files and figuring out where the information is stored, we can do something like I did here with this um, uh, Shenmue save file, where you can see uh, how many days you have left before the game goes to the, the default ending, uh, how much money each save file has, things like that. So with more information, we can we can give you a better sense of what save file it is. So that say you want to download the save file, you're going to be more aware of uh, where exactly you were left off in that save before you saved it off to the server itself. Additionally to that, I have 
been able to figure out how to extract graffiti files from the jet grind radio um and so with that you can check the different you know small medium or small large and extra large you can see uh, exactly what graffiti you're dealing with before you download it uh, you can click the blocks like the size of the blocks uh, on the browser and that'll download the file or in the file itself like when you're checking the information on the name uh, there is a download icon for the Dreamcast for you uh, I've hidden away the VMS uh, save aways on the Dreamcast but when you're browsing on a website it'll show you a little PC icon that you can then click and download with Uh, really quick, I can also extract the eye catches so you can see that there's, you know, all the information that the header could contain. You can get a sense of what's in it before you get the file. And then quickly over to the PC side of the site. Like, this is something I expect you would be browsing when you're on a PC rather than on the Dreamcast because I don't see how much, how helpful this information would be if you're on the Dreamcast. But, you know, uh, I'm just browsing for convenience real quick. Uh, looking through the Fantasy Star Online website, you can see there is information there for um, the DLC. I'm not including any DLC for these games just because I'm not sure about the legality of that at the moment. Uh, and I'm not sure how much I really want to risk around playing around with that. Um, and I don't really have all that all the save files uh, well categorized. But uh, when you put it into the DLC folder, which you can do yourself, um, it'll fill out most of that information for you with a little bit of description. And then the other thing I want to show is how I've been documenting some of these game saves. So each each page has like, towards the top, it tells you what saves that game can generate. Um, and then if you see that they're red, it means I don't have enough information on them. Uh, but the blue ones you can click and you can go through them and you can get a sense of uh, actually what the information is for all those elements. Uh, and figure out how the save file is set up. So, you know, if you want to go over to Shenmue, you can see here's where the month is, here's where the day is, and, and things of that nature. Additionally, you can spoof websites uh, that games are relying on. So, like with Sonic Adventure 2, you can actually compile all the old pages for uh, what the website was and put it onto your, onto your server if someone wants to create a pack for that. Uh, again, I'm not doing that at the moment just because of the legality, but I've, I've done this for my own testing. And um, as you can see, the website is, is fully functional. You can, you can browse around it. Um, well, not fully functional in the sense that the black market doesn't work or anything like that because the CGI scripts that, that the system used were, were hidden away from the users. But uh, because it's PHP uh, and because we can also run CGI scripts, if someone was able to reverse engineer the save files to give us the data we needed, uh, we could, you know, if someone wants to put the effort in, um, we could create a uh, system so that we actually created our own black market and got this back and running. Uh, you could also greatly enhance some of the features here too if you wanted to have some, some level of multiplayer um, sort of mini games or, or a leaderboard or something like that. Um, the, the ability to, to just transfer information to the web and pull it out of the save files creates quite a bit of potential here if someone wants to put the effort in. Finally, what I would like to show off is uh, I've created a little website as a proof of concept for um, Jet Grind Radio. I don't know what the original website looked like and I can't find any examples of any of the data for how the website was set up. But uh, as you can see through here, I have created a website and it does work. You can dial right in and uh, get, a, get a sense of um, all this information so that you can download graffiti. Uh, I also tell you information on how to get out of this website. Uh, since the browser that they give you is kind of limited, I give you all the codes to, to break out of the browser if you click on the help. Um, or you can go to Graffiti, take a look. I've given you some examples of some, some files. So if you want to take the file and modify it and create your own graffiti, you can do that really easily. Just add the file, you know, add the file, change its name, and put it back in that directory. Um, and what happens is the PHP goes through, sees all the images in that directory, figures out which ones are what size, and it will it will list them for you automatically um, and just groups them. Um, and as you can see, I've given you small, large, and extra large. So that's really everything I want to show off right now. Uh, there's quite a lot of features you can do, a lot of things that are involved, um, a lot of small little things that I haven't gone over. Uh, feel free to browse it, play around with it, uh, and just enjoy it. Uh, tell me what you think. 
And if you have any suggestions or if you want to dive into the code and make some alterations and perhaps push up some changes, feel free. Uh, love to see what you guys think of it. And thank you very much.